Hello everybody and welcome back to the Pottery Corner, my studio down on the south coast of England near Chichester. Welcome back everybody, I'm Sarah Amos, good to be with you again. Uh, another glaze kiln opening. Um, the students have been ramping out the work as I said last week um, and indeed there's, been, there's another load to go in so uh, I'll be unpacking this kiln and probably repacking it almost um, the same day to get it back on again. The weather's quite good in England at the moment so I'm trying to get the work through whilst the days are sunny before we have the dreadful um, time change at the end of October so there's quite a lot of bits and pieces to get through. Um, you'll have seen that the chimina is still drying so a great big piece like this, this is two parts, this is the base which is upside down and this is the top it's still drying so it'll take two or three weeks to dry out sufficiently for me to put it through the biscuit firing so it's still sat on the side um, and is the biggest two-part piece that any student has ever made but, but as I said in the last video I'll, I'll go through it um, once it starts to sort of make, it way th make its way through the kiln so look out for that. Right um, without further ado let's get on with it. Um, the kiln was cold yesterday uh, so I have already Flick to the switch and oh yes you know that I've had the sneakiest of sneakies in here. Um, so let's see what we've got on the top shelf. The first thing we have is one of Kathy's platters. So you know that the students make um, the textured platters as part of their introduction to hand building course that I run at the studio. Um, so this particular platter has been made using textured stamps that I make myself and we use in the studio there are a few sets up on Etsy but most of them have now sold but if you're interested have a look on the Etsy shop um, that glaze is Amico's blue rutile with um, just two good coats um, because we didn't want to lose the texture on this dish by putting three coats of this glaze so normally I would say use three coats of an Amico glaze but in this particular instance because we wanted to see the lovely texture on this platter that is two coats of Amico Blue Rotol and it's lovely 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 where it breaks over the texture really really pretty so I know that when Kathy comes for her lesson tomorrow she's gonna to be rather delighted with that one and so she should be all right so that's the first thing out Next, um, this is a platter of Jane's. Now this one's been done in a slightly different way. Uh, Jane was playing with some coloured clay that I keep upstairs in the studio. So um, I add the pigment, the coloured pigment to clay, which I then use to make marbled mugs on the wheel. Um, but Jane has um, made into roundels with different coloured clays and then put the roundels in slices onto a slab and rolled them in. Now this is prototype. Um, so, I mean, there are lessons to be learnt from this particular dish. Uh, one of which is that when, when it's been um, in its greenware state, we needed to have done a little bit more scrubbing so that we didn't end up with the smudges around the roundels. Most of it is okay but the black clay has traveled a little bit here, um, which I hope you can see. So just a little bit of scrubbing would have got rid of that. Um, but nonetheless, a very good prototype. And I know that Jane is planning to make some more and take this project slightly further forward. So good, good try, good first try. And we'll see where she takes that in the future. But nice nonetheless. Um, I've been doing some test tiles. You know, I do lots and lots of test tiles. Um, this particular one, which I have to say, it's a bit 1970s brown pot potter for me. You know, I don't really like brown glazes. But the combination on there is Amico's Iron Stone one coat, Iron Yellow one coat, and Ancient Jasper one coat. Not very inspiring as far as I'm concerned, but if you like brown glazes, you might like that one. Right, first shelf out. This kiln is um, 
unusually packed because it has some big things in the bottom so I've kind of sort of packed it round the big thing so it's slightly more unusually packed and Barbara I expect you're still I expect you're still chuckling after my last um, delightful kiln props I shan't say they're horrible this week either because I've still remembered so we'll get the kiln props out I like to get them out of the way when I'm unloading a kiln because I don't like them falling on the work that's inside the kiln so we'll get them out of the way right this is a oval platter which has been made by Jackie again she's on one of the introduction to hand building courses um, and this is done with a Hartley and Noble form oval form makes this lovely platter really pretty um, so she's used um, one of the fi wooden fish stamps that I have upstairs and then the rest of it is is my um, studio texture from bisque stamps that I make and the glaze on there is um, another really good doer if you're a beginner um, a really good glaze from Amoco which is called Storm and it's this beautiful deep blue um, and it's a celadon glaze you'll have heard me talking about celadon glazes and potter's choice glazes it's a celadon glaze which means that it's bright shiny glossy and see-through so if you're using texture the celadon glazes are brilliant because they sit in your texture and almost give you an outline so that's a really really lovely dish so I'm sure Jackie will be pleased with that. Let's get the cookies out. Everything stands on cookies, as you know. Right, half shelf. Interesting things with half shelves in. Pop that up there. Okay, more test tiles. These are a necessary evil to show us what, what will make what. Um, and there is a saving money on glazes layering and mixing um, video which I'll stick a link up for so this one is iron yellow two coats with one coat of ancient jasper over the top and I use textured test tiles so that I can see what happens when things rest in the texture and actually that one is not bad I mean, it's still brown hmm I'll admit still brown but actually better than the last one because the last one is, um, yeah, you can see the difference between the two. If I was choosing between those two, it would definitely be this one. It's iron yellow by two coats with ancient jasper, one coat over the top. Not bad, not bad. Jury's out on brown glazes for me. Right, let's take these props out. More props. There's a lot of props in this kiln because of the way that it's packed. Right, next. Um... <laughs> this beautiful thing so the first class that the students do um, on the introduction to hand building is pinch pots and this I'll need to knock this cookie off the bottom he's just caught on one of the feet this is Holly's sheep isn't he sweet look at this so this is two um, pinch pots joined together to make a sphere and then Holly has um, put the fleece on, which are tiny little balls of clay all joined up on the surface. Fantastic. And then she's added a lovely face, isn't he nice? And, um, and little legs. And the glaze combination on there, the fleece is iron yellow. So Amoco's iron yellow. And the um, brown is Amoco's river rock. And what's interesting, which I hope you can see on the join between the river rock and the iron yellow, there's a little bit of blue. Isn't that interesting? But actually it doesn't detract from the, um, from the colorway at all. It's actually just an interesting effect that's happened. I bet you couldn't replicate that if you wanted to, could you? And he's got a little tail on, on the back here. Look, isn't that sweet? So this is um, Holly's sheep. I think he's absolutely gorgeous. He's got a lovely face. And I'll just knock his cookie off with the hammer. Um, it just saves them sticking to my kiln shelves. That's why I use them. So he's a lovely little fellow. And I know that she's made him as a present for somebody. So I'm sure they'll be delighted when they see that. Right, more test tiles. This one's even worse than the last one. 
oatmeal times two coats with ancient jasper, sorry, beg your pardon, oatmeal times two coats with ancient copper times two coats. So I'm trying out um, combinations with ancient copper, which is a new glaze to me. I know it's been out for a while, but um, I haven't managed to get hold of it until now. So that is um, frankly ghastly. Shan't be using that combination. And another test tile, more in the bottom. This one, what's this one? So this one is two coats of ironstone, two coats of iron yellow, and one coat of ancient jasper. Now I know this because I write on the back of my test tiles with a glaze, an underglaze pencil. So I know exactly what these test tiles are because I write it on the back. And that's a good tip. If you only buy one underglazed pencil, buy a dark one that you can then use to write on the back of things. It's really useful. Saves you having to paint it on with underglaze. It just write it on with a pencil. Um, again, hmm, not very inspiring. That's another 1970s brown glaze, in my opinion. Right, let me get rid of that prop there. And that one there. Let's get those out. Right. Those up there. Okay, this is Kathy's first pinch pot. So she's made sea urchins. These are nice. So um, again, as I say, two pinch pots joined together and then she's made this one look like a sea urchin. Really nice, lovely texture on there. Um, that is Amico's Marigold. And then she's dotted on some ancient Jasper. But actually it's got a little bit lost. Um, probably not enough of it on there. It does give it a little, little bit of differentiation, um, but probably could have been a little bit um, more generous with the with the Jasper. So yes, but nice nonetheless. I'm sure she'll be very pleased with that. The uh, Marigold is nice. Uh, this is one of mine. You watched one of my kiln openings recently, a couple of weeks ago. Had some fantastic pumpkins came out made by Louise. They were just gorgeous, really lovely. Lots of comments from you on those. So I thought I'd have a go. I have to say that mine is not as good. And the um, combination is one coat of ironstone, two coats of iron yellow, and then I put quite a lot of ancient jasper on the top, hoping that it would flow. Well, it has flowed, but it hasn't given me the beautiful blue um, that Louise managed to get on her pumpkins. I think I've used too much jasper. Um, I think you probably only need a little bit of jasper, but nonetheless, actually, I quite like that. It is a bit brown for me, but I quite like the way that the glazes have interacted around this it's just a seed head um quite like that that's not bad bit brown there is a bit of blue just on this side here um so actually yes not bad quite like that interesting it's interesting how the glazes have reacted with each other which was the um, point of the exercise so i guess from that point it was successful right now there's a funny little quarter shelf in here, you see? I did say this kiln was packed rather oddly. Right, okay, let's get that out. Barbara, I bet you're still laughing about me taking props out. I am being quite nice to them though, aren't I? Right, so this is another of Kathy's um, urchins. So to match the smaller one, one's larger, one's smaller. Those are quite nice actually, aren't they? Quite pretty, I like the um, marigold. So again, that's um, Amico's marigold with ancient jasper over. And actually the jasper's worked a bit better on that one, although you can't see it very well. It has given a little bit more definition. Right, um, this is Kathy's seed head. Get the cookie off the bottom. I've got a little shard on there, so I'm just watching my fingers. So again, that's um, a little seed pod, poppy head pod made by Kathy. 
and again it's marigold with a little bit of jasper again on the on the top um, a little bit of jasper probably could have done with a little bit more but nonetheless a nice thing and it matches her set nicely uh, next these are Holly's cool good job that one was on the cookie look at that can you see where that's gone right the way flowed right the way off the end um, so again I shall be chipping off the uh, um, the cookie on that one so that is the same combination as my seed pod which again is um, iron stone by one iron yellow by two and um, I think she's used ancient copper instead of jasper on the rim so it has given a slightly different um, color way actually it's quite nice it's quite nice how it's flowed on the sides very nice so I hope that she likes that I quite like that it's not bad not bad at all and the other one now this one is much more blue now isn't that interesting probably glazed in exactly the same way whose is that oh that's Kathy so that's interesting so this one is Holly's and she's used the ancient copper and this one is Kathy's and she's used the same combination as mine but clearly did not put as much jasper on so there you are look at that you get those lovely blues just from the iron stone with iron yellow over and then the jaspers just come down off of the stalk that's lovely that's really nice that's like louise's but but very very pretty lovely 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 really like that combination and note to self don't use so much jasper and then you get the nice blue so that's that's a goodie I'm sure she'll be pleased with that i would be it's gorgeous and it's really quite blue on the bottom edges where the jasper hasn't reached so very nice lovely very nice coming up for pumpkin season so those will be those will be good one more test tile in the bottom what's this okay now that's interesting so that's ancient jasper with two coats with ancient copper two coats over the top and if i wiggle the the tile in the in the light it actually does have a coppery tone on the top of the tile so um that's quite interesting it's quite metallic i don't know if you can sit pick that up on the camera if i tilt it backwards and forwards hopefully you can so that's ancient jasper two coats with ancient copper two coats over quite nice quite like that one again a bit brown for me but quite nice uh next this is Carolyn's vase right now that's been stood on a cookie and um yes you can see that it's actually broken the cookie where the glaze has come down so there's a little bit of cookie stuck on the bottom of this piece this is a hand built slab built um vase tapered vase uh, made by Carolyn rather lovely actually so she's used some slip um on the back to give you this sort of lovely texture and the glaze on the back is um amico's um blue sapphire which is really very nice actually and then on the front we have textured turquoise which is this green lovely again three coats of that and then the um I'm going to call them Dalek bobbles. Anybody who lives in England, you'll know what that is from Doctor Who. Um, Dalek bobbles, and they've been done in um, Amico's Palladium. And Amico's Palladium does this lovely thing where it drags, which is really pretty on this because it's literally gone down. Almost looks like she did that on purpose, but she didn't. It's just where the um, where the Palladium has trailed down. So that's gone really lovely. And actually, a nice modern piece. Um, I quite like that. It's really nice. And the, the palladium over the top of the textured turquoise is nice. And I shall just have to get this piece of cookie off the bottom. So that's very nice. Right. Next. There are two of Sarah's um, Tibetan prayer wheels in here. 
Um, this is quite an ongoing project. Here's the last of the test tiles. Yuck! Oatmeal times two with ancient jasper times two. Least said soonest mended on that one. Definitely will not be using that. Horrible, horrible. Right, so the first of these, these are quite large. These are made in craft crank clay. Um, and Sarah has asked her three children to decorate one of the um, prayer wheels. She's going to have a totem of them. So she's going to stack them one on top of the other um, uh, like a totem pole. So they are, they're hollow. The actual make is hollow and then has a, a tube that goes through the inside so that she can put it onto um, something like a scaffold pole or something so that she can stack them. Um, they're made in craft crank so they can stay outside all year round. And she got her children to decorate one each. Um, and this one is Ivo's. Um, I can't remember how old Ivo is, I'm afraid. He's about... I think he's just started secondary school but anyway this one is Ivo's and he has done a beach scene as you can see and there's shells and starfish and this is the sand and this is the sea really lovely well done Ivo nice bit of decorating there and we are actually going to fire this one again um, with some luster into the luster um, firing so that she can bring out the luster on the shells, which I think will be a really good idea. So that's come out really lovely. Very nice indeed. Great. Um, glaze combinations, there's too many to mention on here really, but this is Marigold, this is Amico Sky, and on the top, the darker blue, is um, Downpour. So lovely, that one's really nice, Sarah. You did a good job on that. And um, this is the other of them one of the other children's goodness me um this is sorrel's now sorrel i know is five look at this <laughs> this has been decorated with underglazes isn't that beautiful beautiful rainbow on there that she's done and uh, we've got a mermaid's tail and a little bit of beach here and sarah's put their name and the date on them um, so that she'll always know when they were done. What a lovely thing to have in your garden. Um, and we have unicorns, of course. Five-year-olds, very keen on unicorns. Lovely. Absolutely delightful. Look at that. What a lovely thing. What a lovely thing to have in your garden uh, to remind you of what your children were doing when they were younger. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. And I know that Sorrel gave Sarah the colours that she wanted her things to be done so you know she really did give, she really did give it a good go sorrel bless you um because she had to make sure she got the the um the rainbow in the right order oh god forbid you got the rainbow in the wrong order so yes very nice and actually um magnus is the other son his isn't quite through the kiln yet it's at the back waiting to get in so we'll see how his comes out but this has been a, a magic project. Just fantastic. I love it. So well done, Sarah. That's really good. Okay, so that is your lot in there. A couple of things. Student of the week this week. Whoops. She says. Um, I'm going to give it to Holly. So student of the week this week is Holly for this lovely characterful sheep. Isn't he great? Love him. Might be a girl, of course, but I'm calling him a boy. Really sweet. This is her first piece out of the kiln for her course, and she's just done a lovely job on it. So well done, Holly. Student of the week for you this week. Um, and just one other small thing. So I've had a lovely message from Freddie Moretti. And for those of you who've been watching my videos for a long time, you'll know Freddie. I do a reference to him quite a lot because he lives in Florida. And I always imagine him on a beach with a very nice cocktail with something out the you know an umbrella or something coming out of the top of it I, I don't you know poor Freddie he I'm, I'm sure he's fed up with me saying those things but Freddie sent me um some pictures of the wonky pot that he's made from the wonky pot template um so there is a wonky pot tutorial on the channel and again I'll put the link up at the end um and the wonky top pot template is available via my Etsy shop so Freddie bought said template 
and he has made his own wonky pot there it is in all its glory but not only did he make it but he made it let me say what he's called it with a tower theme okay so this is the underside of freddy's um wonky pot um, and i hope you can see that on this leg he's actually put a staircase what a mad thing to do freddy you're quite mad you really are and then he sent me a close-up picture of the leg with the staircase on it so he's actually put a staircase that goes right the way round the foot um, on the underside of the wonky pot i mean bonkers he must be as bonkers as i am freddy but i love that i love the i love the detail of it i love the fact that you wouldn't expect it to be there so when you found it it would be a surprise so well done freddy thank you for sending me the photos and any of the others of you who do my projects, please send me a picture. The link to my website's in the um, description below. Um, and I'm on Instagram, which is the .pottery.corner. So well done, Freddie. Another lovely wonky. And I know that many of you have bought the template. Thank you very much. And uh, it'd be great to have your pictures if you'd like to send them through. OK, so that's your lot for today. Thanks for watching as usual. I'll see you all next week. Bye for now.